The experiences we have in our youth are crucial to shaping who we become. As kids grow up, interactions with parents, teachers, and other outside influences can shape what type of career they pursue. Now, this doesn't have to be an outright declaration from an adult saying exactly what a kid is going to do with the rest of their life. But don't think that those little comments made about how amazing lawyers and doctors are go unnoticed by your kids. Of course, this can go the other way as well. Meaning, kids can be just as influenceable when it comes to being driven away from certain careers. Now, this might be to their benefit when they're set on becoming a demigod or a magical wizard as a job. But what about an engineer or a scientist? The reality for many girls is that they find themselves driven away from careers in STEM. Today, STEM persists in having one of the largest gender gaps. Though women make up about half of the workforce, they occupy 30% of STEM careers. And within the highest paying fields of engineering and computer science, only 21% and 19% respectively. Why is it that this gap is so apparent? What can we do to address it? And finally, why is it important that we do so? First, I'd like to start off by sharing a little bit about the beginning of my own STEM journey. So, when I was 10 years old, I would say that seesaws were undoubtedly my favorite objects. I was absolutely enchanted by their up-down motion. I remember I would make little pencil seesaws on my school desk, just like put two pencils on top of each other and pass the time by having my fingers just push up and down on the lever. Um, but anyway, eventually I decided that I wanted to translate this pencil seesaw into something larger. And after frequent playground trips, decided to make a seesaw using what I had. And so, under the Georgia sun, I dragged bricks from my backyard to the shade of a tree, looped and tied rope around the grain of the clay, and secured a wooden plank onto my brick fulcrum. By the end of the summer, the wooden plank pivoted around the bricks, and I technically had a seesaw. Looking back, I would call this the first dip of my toe into the world of engineering. Using what I had learned in school about simple machines, I had been able to pull together materials available to me to create this beautiful seesaw, which of course was only beautiful to me. I remember thinking that I could make anything. Swings, slides, and believe it or not, my imagination extended beyond playground-related objects. The vision of all my potential creations carried into school the following day, powered by the pride of my accomplishment. However, upon returning home, I found no trace of my seesaw, faced instead by my father's stern glares and sharp remarks. Princesa, I remember him saying, I don't want you playing with these things again. And he had some points saying how I could have taken out one of my eyes or dropped a brick on my foot and broken something. So his hands had pushed me back into the kitchen to help my mother with dinner for the night. My ideas of everything I'd wanted to create following the seesaw were dismissed. And just the thought of building or designing anything became unappealing. Another thing, I didn't even know what engineering was at the time. But before I could even define the word, I was already scared to explore it. I had no one in my life who I could turn to, who could offer me a different perspective, you know? Maybe encourage me to channel my creative energy into a less hazardous activity, but one that would still let me focus on my interests. And I'm sure plenty of girls have similar stories. The truth is, an absence of STEM role models for girls can make them less certain about choosing a STEM career. And for black and Hispanic girls, this lack is even more apparent as they collectively make up about a quarter of the women in the STEM world. Perhaps some of you are familiar with that feeling of walking into a room full of people and still not being able to find anyone you recognize. This is a pretty enduring emotion that comes with going into a field where you can't find anyone that looks like you. You're not sure if you're going to be accepted or if you're really qualified to be there. It's only natural for girls to compare themselves to the people they can actually see in the field. 
And when all a girl can see is a bunch of men who look nothing like her, do you think it's easy for her to find a place where she fits? When girls have someone in their life to look up to, it can make the jump into an unknown but interesting place much easier. And women currently in or working to get into the STEM world can become the role models that these girls are looking for. So, just to emphasize, if we allow girls to be driven away from the STEM world now, we are also discouraging the next generation of girls from pursuing their STEM interests. And speaking of discouragement, it can start pretty early. From young ages, teachers may misjudge a girl's ability in math and science. And this is so common that there is a proven bias against girls when it comes to studying these subjects. Studies have also shown that girls place a greater importance on abilities in the STEM world than boys do, believing that they must possess more knowledge or talent in comparison to participate. This, coupled with years of being told that they're no good at math and science, can make them even less likely to choose STEM as a career. Later in life, there exists a belief that women may be unsuited for the work required in a STEM career due to family obligations, such as caring for children. And while it is true that women are more likely to cite family-related causes when leaving a STEM career, it is also more likely that these women have spouses involved in the STEM world. And it's not found that these women's careers are prioritized in the case where an issue does arise, which sends the wrong message to young girls about their relative importance in the field. On top of role models, it's crucial to have spaces where girls feel comfortable exploring their STEM interests, free of judgment. We can say, support women in STEM all we want. It's easy to repost those graphics that scream, hashtag girl power at us in colorful, flowery visuals. And it's a wonderful thing to want to show this support, don't get me wrong. But if all we ever do is outwardly express this, while sending girls back into an environment where they have no place to actually develop these interests, how can we really expect growth on their part? Like I mentioned earlier, alienation is a major concern for girls. And I, as well as many others, I'm sure, can attest to the pressure that can surface in these kinds of environments. So, it's crucial for outside influences in a girl's life to be aware and supportive of her interests. Parents can promote a growth mindset in their children, which enable them to learn and grow confidence, rather than labeling them as inherently incapable of pursuing a certain field. It's also a good idea to be aware of local opportunities that might interest your child. So for example, many schools and libraries offer STEM-focused events, such as science fairs and hands-on projects. If you notice these lining up with your child's interests, encourage them to participate. And I know, sometimes it's not possible to take your kids places, but there are also plenty of online resources for girls to become more knowledgeable about STEM as well. Teachers can make sure that their girls feel supported in their classrooms and be aware of any pre-existing biases that they may have. Make sure your girls feel encouraged in these environments and are aware of their capabilities. For both younger and older girls, there are many programs and societies available to help them learn more about STEM. And on top of educational resources, many of these provide internships, workshops, and most of all, communities for girls to meet role models and like-minded peers. Let's make sure girls understand what opportunities they have to become involved in the STEM world. And as a whole, let us support these girls and create spaces where they're comfortable pursuing these interests. Now, why is it actually important for us to acknowledge this gap in the STEM world? Well, as it stands, we live in a world where a great chunk of our population is not directly encouraged to participate in innovation and research. In other words, we're totally missing out by keeping these girls out of STEM. By encouraging girls to go into this field, we can open ourselves up to this potential progress and have it become a tangible reality. For example, I'd like to point to Lanier High School's all-girl underwater robotics team, the Sea Cows. 
Founded her freshman year by student McKenna Riley, the Seek House created an environment for girls to learn about engineering and programming through the May ROV competition. It's pretty cool, isn't it? <laughs> In the four years that this program has existed at Lanier, they've qualified for the World Championship three times. Yeah. And they're actually, they're actually competing today as well, so wish them luck. The support these girls have received from their mentors and community, along with the many hours of effort they put into their work, have led them to design robots meant to better the conditions of our oceans and planet as a whole. In allowing these girls to develop their passions, they are creating solutions to important issues. When we support our girls in their STEM endeavors, we allow them to find opportunities and make discoveries for themselves that can circle back to benefit a much wider group. So, if any of you ever see a girl building a rickety seesaw in her yard, maybe offer to help her build a swing set. The support I've received from my mentors, teachers, and family has been essential in keeping me on my journey through the STEM world. As I stand before you, I'm preparing for my first year in mechanical engineering. as a recipient of the Stamps President Scholarship to Georgia Tech. I'm grateful for this opportunity, hopeful for my future, and excited to see what I am able to create during my time at Tech. For any girls that may be listening to this, I encourage you to take the support of the people in your life and pave your way. Don't be afraid to say yes to the opportunities that stand in front of you. After all, taking a chance can give you the opportunity to learn something new. And just know that the places that might intimidate you now can become like second homes to you in the future. Everyone has the potential to innovate. So as a whole, let's recognize this potential in the people we may not have always looked to in the past. As we support them in achieving their dreams, we might just find that their passions are what create the solutions to the future. Thank you.